Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. Usually my restorations are of pens that are mostly dead. Ooh, but ooh, look who knows so much, huh? Well, it just so happens that your friend here is only mostly dead. Mostly dead pens need the nib fixed or a new latex sack or the vacuumatic filler overhauled and a little spit and polish. He always kept things nice and clean. And the pen is right as rain. If I could find a way to equalize the imbalance in his cerebral spinal fluid, why, he'd be as right as rain. But today's fountain pen back from the dead was deader than a doornail. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. This is a circa 1940 celluloid button filler by a pen company called Le Gay. That's Legu with an accent aigu over the E, which turns Legu into Legay. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of them either. But it's basically a clone of a Parker Dual Fold Jr. What's the matter? You didn't think there were clones in the 1940s? Need a clone! I got this pen more than a year ago, just when I was starting to dabble in restorations. I pulled the nib from the feed, but in doing so, the 14 karat gold nib was so very thin and fragile it folded itself in two between my fingers. If it wasn't dead before, I certainly drove a stake through its heart by destroying the nib. Wait! No! Oh my God! So I put the pen in my junk drawer. Then I acquired a Parker Challenger that had the opposite problem. It had a beautiful gold nib, but the barrel disintegrated into dust the moment I touched it. But to my surprise, the Parker Challenger nib was exactly the same size as the warranted gold nib on the Legay. I sewed the dead parts together. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Oh, I know what it feels like to be gone. And this is now truly a pen back from the dead. Let's take a look right now. Before we look at the Legay, I wanted to remind viewers that a couple of my previously resurrected fountain pens are still available for purchase. Here is a 1943 Esterbrook H in foliage green celluloid. It's a fully restored lever filler with a very flexible steel nib that I'm selling for $80 US. And you can see that restoration by clicking right up here. And here is a 1947 Parker 51 Demi Vacumatic, which has been fully restored. It has a fine 14 karat gold nib and I'm selling it for $120 US. And you can see that restoration video by clicking right up here. And I'll be selling this restored Legay fountain pen as well for $75 US. If you're interested in any of these three pens, please write me at inkquiringminds at gmail.com. The first to pay me through PayPal will get the pen. So let's look at the Legay now before you rush off and email me. Here are some of the photos that I took when I first bought the pen. It only needed a new sack and a new pressure bar to be fully restored. And here is the unboxing video. And here it is. It's called a, I don't know whether you can see that or not, Lugu. Lugu. There it says the price. And on this side it says Lugu 14 CT nib. And the clip says Legu on it as well. And it's celluloid. And it has a blind cap, which comes off. And it's a button filler. And I don't even know whether that is very crusty. So I'm not even going to try to move it yet until I soak it. It feels rusty as well. And that finial looks like it's fallen off. The clip is kind of off center. And it has a, indeed, 14 karat gold. It says, first quality, 14 CT, warranted. Ebonite feed, right there, it's a little bit off. The whole thing is solid with old ink. I can't get the section off. So I'm going to do some work on this. But I will take this pen through the process of seeing whether I can get it cleaned up and whether I can get it working or not. More adventures to come. 
and here is the pen fully restored. I'll show you some of the video I took of the process I used to restore the pen to full working order, and then I'll show some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And this was one of the first vintage fountain pens I ever purchased. And here's the nib came in the Leguay, and uh, I didn't have a lot of experience at pulling nibs out, but it is 14 karat gold. But when I was pulling it out, somehow it folded up on me. So there, I must have put pressure on the side of it or something like that because it's split now right down the center. And so it's uh, useless. So I figured, well, useless nib, useless pen. Plus the pressure bar on it was all corroded. And so I sort of gave up on this pen and put it in storage. Then I purchased a Parker Challenger and it had a really nice gold nib on it, but the body was cracked. And, well, you can see the unboxing here. Here's another Parker model that I have not been familiar with. This is called a Parker Challenger. And that section is coming out, but once I, I looked at this pen after I got out of the store, and it is cracked right here. And this is a button filler. Certainly that 14 karat gold nib is going to polish up nicely. It looks like it has a couple of issues with it. I have to take a look to see whether that's aligned or not. But it looks like an architect almost to me. That's the Parker Challenger. And unfortunately that pen disintegrated in my hands. There was no way to repair it. So I salvaged the nib and the pressure bar from that uh, Parker Challenger. And here is the Parker nib. And it's dated 1946. And it's the perfect size. It's identical in size to the Leguay fountain pen and fits that feed nicely. And the pressure bar in the Challenger uh, was brand new. So I borrowed that as well. And this is the original button from the Leguay. And there's the clip. It looks like brass to me. The celluloid body's in pretty good shape. I'm going to polish it up. It has a really nice imprint of Leguay on there fountain pen but you can tell from the cap that the celluloid has shrunk over the years that band it sort of spins a little bit and you can see that it wasn't exactly precisely engineered as it's thicker on this side than it is on that the cap finial when it sits down inside that cap this clip which is not round either they all come out kind of wonky but I'm going to polish up these parts I've got a new sack for the pen that we're going to install. I'm going to polish up that section and we're going to see if we can get this old pen to write now that it's a Franken pen. Now we'll step through the micro meshes from 1800 grit through to 12,000 grit, one at a time. And there we are with all the micro meshes. The uh, blind cap has come up a little bit pitted, that ebonite, so I might have to blacken that up. But all the scratches are out and it's looking very shiny. And there we are through all the micro meshes and polishing compound and that ebonite blind cap still has some little bit of pitting on it so i might try to blacken that up with some potion that i've got the top finial came up very very nicely but it's very very shiny at this point 
and when we put the section on it it's very nice indeed and I shined up the brass button and the nib is all ready to go just gonna polish up that feed as well put the clip back on and then we'll resack this pen See that celluloid has shrunk over time and so that band is a little bit loose and the clip ring protrudes a little bit but it's tight on there and we should be good to go so I'll just put the nib and feed back together lined up properly I turn this around to find the least resistance get a little bit of rubber matting and then push and now we check alignment very very fine nib very flexible as well it needs to be aligned perfectly I'll work on that a bit now I'm just gonna dip test the nib before I put the sack in 1946 Parker 14 karat gold I'd say extra fine and it still needs some alignment it's okay that way but it's scratchy that way but it's writing now we can install the pressure bar and the way it works is this end pushes up against the bottom of the section this part here hooks over the edge lip of the back of the pen and this part here goes into the push button and when you push it the pressure bar pushes up against the sack and squeezes it so we put the pressure bar down inside the barrel and the easiest thing to do is to put the button on the end and then fit the whole thing and give it a push and then we can open up the section and make sure it works there you can see it working and when you put the sack down inside there it squeezes that sack I'll just take that out and mark that spot right there and we'll cut the sack right there like that get our sack spreader and we give it a dry run here there we go Let's dredge that sack in some talc so it'll slide down inside that barrel really nicely without twisting might be good that's not going to take a lot of ink but it should work now we'll get out our shellac now the cap is nicely shellacked on it's very tight there we go and we'll paint some shellac on that section nozzle just like that put our sack spreader on give it a little bit of a twist to make sure it's straight and we set that aside to dry overall the pen is about four and three quarter inches in length capped and is very similar to a 1940s Parker Dualfold Junior it's a button filler and it's made of honey brown celluloid with black ebonite and a brass clip the celluloid has shrunk slightly over the years but it's very thick and sturdy and there are no cracks the cap unscrews with two rotations and we see the black ebonite section and the number five size 14 karat gold 1944 parker extra fine nib and ebonite feed the cap posts deeply and securely and it's a really nice length and balance posted now let's look at some size comparisons here's the 1940s legay celluloid button filler with a 1943 esterbrook h celluloid lever filler a 1947 parker 51 demi vacuumatic a 1940s schaefer snorkel touchdown and a pilot metropolitan for scale now let's see them posted and here they are posted the esterbrook and the pilot are both steel nibs where the rest of them are 14 karat gold and of course this is a parker 14 karat gold from a 1944 parker challenger now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted the legay the esterbrook and the parker 51 demi are all a little bit short to be written with posted for me anyway now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is a 1940s 
Le Gay, and it has a number five size Parker 14 karat gold, extra fine. Actually, we'll see it's extra, extra, extra fine gold nib. And let's check the wetness. It's actually not too bad for a very, very fine nib. And there's lots of feedback because this truly is a needlepoint nib. But I've got it as smooth as I can, so it's not scratchy at all. And as to line variation, you can squeeze out some. It's not what I would call a flexible nib, but you can get some line variation out of it from very, very thin to a fairly decent thick line. And the ink is Waterman's I think the ghost of Shirley Cantrell is still haunting me because I no sooner wrote Waterman's that I ran out of ink and I completed the rest of the writing sample without turning my recorder back on. So we're going to continue from that point on. The ink is indeed Waterman's Serenity blue and the line this nib makes is a very thin 0 0.2 millimeters to 0 0.3 millimeters because it is slightly thicker on the horizontal than it is on the vertical as i mentioned when i looked at this nib that it looked like um, like a mini architect nib and that makes it a western extra 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 fine or needlepoint or a Japanese extra fine on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description below and when you push the nib you get up to about a 0 0.8 millimeter line which is a Western broad but again it's not a flex nib just vintage gold and for our quote And for some reverse rating, it's very, very thin indeed. Dry and bordering on scotchy. And some quick rating. No issues whatsoever. So what are my thoughts on this resurrection? I left this pen in my pen morgue drawer for more than a year. I'm glad I finally decided to put two dead pens together to make one very nice vintage writer. It's not a top-of-the-line Parker Duofold, but it does have a top-of-the-line Parker Gold Nib and is very attractive. I expect this pen will last another 80 years. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I'll give your secretary. I made this.